PY curves, a representation of soil properties for use on piles. The feature covers the non-linear relationship between the lateral resistance P and the lateral movement of the pile, Y. Importantly, the Y here is lateral movement in any direction, not necessarily in global Y. Lusas uses a cylindrical coordinate system in the background to implement PY curves. Although the generic industry name is PY, we also include TZ curves, the relationship between skin friction and vertical movement, and also QZ curves, the relationship between end bearing resistance at the toe and vertical movement at the toe. All of these relationships are non-linear and vary with material type, as shown in these example curves. They also vary with depth as well. This could make them complicated to define, but LUSAS simplifies this for you. Enter the material properties, and LUSAS uses a codified approach to automatically calculate the PY curves from the material properties and the model geometry. LUSAS can even handle varying materials with depth. And even if your ground level varies across your site, as long as your soil strata are relatively level across your site, you only need to define one set of soil layers. LUSAS will then look at the global Z coordinate of each node to work out what layer it's in, and it also has the option to take the local top node as the top of the soil in order to calculate the correct vertical pressure. In this example integral bridge model, we need to add PY curves to act as supports on our piles. First, we need to create joint elements to handle the relationship between the structural model and the surrounding soil. Creating and assigning joints of supports has been made easier. Each joint will take its appropriate spring stiffness from the soil material, which we now need to define. We can do this through attributes, material, embedded pile material layup. We can define multiple layers in here, each layer being defined by its top coordinate. The last layer will go on indefinitely. Our first layer is going to be a global coordinate of Z 3.5 meters. This is a top of our abutment. The soil material here is going to be a backfill material. We'll be using a dense sand to ISO 19902. We'll be using the default values for this example, just for speed, but obviously you can edit the material properties for your particular soil. Our next layer is going to start at minus one meter, and it's going to be a sandy silt. Our final layer in this model is going to start at a Z coordinate of minus four, and it's going to be a cohesive soil, a clay. We can modify these PY curves for many cycles of loading. This takes account of the reduced stiffness where the pile's movement will weaken the adjacent soil over time. We can put in a water level for this site, it's at minus three meters. We can also add a surcharge on top of the soil if we want to. This is useful if you have an embankment, for example. The base of our piles can be plugged or unplugged. In this example, we have concrete piles and therefore they're clearly plugged. If you've got driven steel piles, the base might be plugged or unplugged. That will obviously affect the QZ curve at the toe. Should you wish to model PY curves that don't conform to one of the provided codified soil types, these can be created manually through attributes, material, joint, piecewise linear elastic, and then choosing a cylindrical coordinate system and specifying the force displacement curves. When we then assign these soil materials to our piles, we need to choose what the ground level is taken as. It can either be taken at the topmost node of each pile, or we can specify the ground level is actually higher. In this particular model, I'm going to take the ground level at 3.5 meters, i.e. the top of the fill behind the abutment, and LUSAS will then calculate the vertical pressure at the top of the pile, taking account that 3.5 meters of the backfill layer that we defined. In actual fact, we have 3.5 meters of fill behind the abutment, but no fill in front of the abutment. This isn't catered for by the codes of practice, and some engineering judgment is required as to whether or not you want to include it. PY curves are non-linear, therefore we need to turn on our non-linear controls. And we can then solve to get results. If we then select a node, right click and go to one click report, we can see both the PY curve 
and the TZ curve for this particular node. If we then turn on the bending moment diagram, we can see the bending moments within the piles. We could then compare these against the pile capacity using the appropriate design check tool within LUSAS. And we can obviously go on to design the rest of the structure using this support scheme for the piles. PY curves in LUSAS, allowing the easy definition of the nonlinear relationship between the piles and their supporting soil.